What you see behind me is happening in Sicily every day. The intensity and frequency of wildfires is reaching a point when nature simply can't recover anymore. Sicilian authorities on Wednesday recorded temperatures of 48.8 degrees Celsius, a new record for all of Europe. Local firefighters are often overwhelmed and understaffed. That's why guerrilla fire brigades are now forming to desperately try and protect the local landscapes and forests. We went into the heart of the inferno to meet the people that are fighting the fire every day and provide crucial equipment and training for them to go on. I'm Lorenzo and I'm a citizen that is illegally fighting fires. It's incredible to see what the communities can do and when you get together how much power you actually have in your hands. We are Planet Wild. Welcome to Mission 6. This is La Muarda, a beautiful mountain range overlooking the Mediterranean Sea and connecting the villages of Alto Fonte and Piana degli Albanese in northern Sicily. Its forest cover is home to wildcats, crested porcupines, Italian hares and a plethora of migratory birds using Sicily as the last stop on their route to Africa. Or rather, this is what La Muarda used to look like. Because in 2020, a fire broke out that completely burned down the forest. Non eravamo preparati per niente perché non ci aspettavamo un incendio del genere. Non 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 avevamo neanche l'idea che ci potesse succedere una cosa del genere. Pepper lives in Alto Fonte. The fire came fast while official fire guards were busy fighting elsewhere. With a broken foot, Pepper stayed up day and night together with others to save what they could. We have spent the incendio the first two days, but anyway, we have arrived in Pattuglia at least four days because the fire continued to reappicarsi. It was just four days to live in the car. During these days, the fire took its course and scorched almost all of La Muarda. We're standing in the remains of the forest right now. With over 1000 degrees Celsius, the fire burned so hot that most organisms above and below ground couldn't survive, and so fast that most animals couldn't flee. And what's worse, new tree saplings that we can see sprouting three years later have a high likelihood not to grow into adulthood before the next fire just consumes everything again. Wildfires are a natural phenomenon, but not uh, in the frequency and in the intensity that we have here in Sicily. This is Hannah. Together with Peppa and a crew of locals, she's building a grassroots anti-wildfire team. And we're here to help them get started. Their civilian expertise range from permaculture to forestry and ornithology to natural shepherding and eco-management. But what unites them is that any form of nature restoration in this region ultimately leads you to fire prevention. Anything you want to do here in terms of rewilding or nature conservation, you will run into the topic of wildfires. There's no way around that. To understand the urgency and strategy, let's learn what we're actually dealing with. But first, a quick note on who we are. Planet Wild is a new initiative that anyone can join to help restore our planet through monthly missions like this. On our next mission, I will open this box to release one of Europe's largest predators back into the wild. If you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. If you want these missions to become bigger, consider joining Planet Wild as a backer. There's a link in the description. I'll also share more info at the end. Now, back to the video. Sicily has by far the most wildfires in all of Italy. From 2008 to 2021, over 300,000 hectares went up in smoke. That's more than double that of any other area in Italy, and the frequency has increased dramatically since the 80s. Look at this, it's dry as bone. Every spark, every cigarette butt can now be the beginning of an inferno. But how could an entire landscape turn into a tinderbox? It's because of three ways that humans have meddled with the natural balance. Number one, climate change has brought a rise in temperatures to most places of the world. This year, the city of Palermo has already seen temperatures of 47 degrees Celsius, shattering previous records by over two degrees. In an already dry climate like here, that turns any organic material into highly flammable debris. Number two, Modern forestry has replaced a native climate-resilient tree mix with fast-growing monocultures of pine and eucalyptus. Both these tree species catch and spread fire much faster than the many oak species that originally dominated the landscape. And number three, human settlements have displaced nature's own fire brigades. Large grazers like deer, mufflons or wild horses who kept dry grass and shrubs short that otherwise fuel the fires we see today. 
Their role was originally taken by domestic herds, especially goats. But as young people are moving to the cities, the rural population is declining, and so are the number of goat herds. Which means every spring, grass and shrubs can grow unstopped by either wild or domestic grazers. And then summer comes and turns the entire landscape into a gigantic, dry haystack. Because of these factors, local firefighters often can't control the situation anymore. And so civilians have started to join the fight. To be honest, this concept did not compute with me at first, but the fact is that it has become a crucial part of reality, where Sicilian fire brigades are stretched thin between 11,000 deployments in one year. And people will always fight for what they love. With Planet Wild, we make sure that those who fight to protect the wilderness around them will get the proper training for it. With our community, we are financing professional fire response training to make sure everyone here stays safe. Hi, I'm Lorenzo and I'm a citizen that is illegally fighting fires. It's really the declaration of I'm uh, making a crime actually, what I'm saying. <laughs> this is Lorenzo. He has been fighting fires since he was a kid. Because professional firefighters couldn't reach their remote home in time, he and his family had to learn how to deal with wildfires themselves. Timing on fighting fires is crucial because in the first minutes or first maybe hour, the fire is still little and you can do it off with little tools. To put simply, a single person can fight even the biggest potential fire if they respond while it's still a spark. We started just trying what we could at the moment of a fire. Then we started to buy some tools because the problem was repeating and repeating. And then our neighbors came to help us or we went to help them during a fire. And then another neighbor came with another truck and it became like a little firefighter team. This effort turned into the formation of MAI, Movimento Antincendio Ibleo, the first guerrilla firefighting group in Sicily. Today, Lorenzo shares what he has learned at the front lines of over 100 wildfires. You have to understand where to approach the fire, from where you have to escape, how many people you need, for maybe how many hours you're gonna be there. No, none of that is official exactly. This is all super grassroots. But the reality is that these teams often work side by side with the official firefighters and they see their own work primarily as a support to them where support is needed. These local networks, they can really be effective if they have the right tools. So what are the tools of a guerrilla firefighter? To cover yourself, you need long cotton clothing, a hat, sunglasses, good boots and a mask to protect from the smoke. Next, you need a phone, power bank and headset, as you'll be constantly in communication with others. To take care of yourself, you bring calorie-dense food and lots of water. A frozen bottle is best, so you won't have to drink hot water. A saw and a hand pruner to clear the way, and a so-called fire broom, self-made from old fire hoses that can kill the flames by brute force. But that technique is extremely physically demanding. Thankfully, there's even better tools available. That's why we brought what the team asked us for. Water pump backpacks, fireproof footwear, and a mobile fire stop unit. The gear is built specifically for this terrain and use case. It's robust and simple to handle. Okay, 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 okay. What we see here is just a first introduction to self-organization tactics. It's followed by professional and rigorous fire safety training over the next months. Seeing the sheer physical commitment necessary to protect what they love and the length at which they're willing to go in these already scorching temperatures is nothing but impressive and absolutely necessary. Because what starts as a drill can turn into reality in a blink of an eye, as we were about to witness. On our last day, we set out to document the aftermath of a recent wildfire. Hella showed us satellite data, tracking all registered fires of the last seven days. We decided to head to one location that spanned over multiple kilometers, connecting several individual fires. After a two-hour ride, we arrived at the location. The fire had consumed entire fields. Now look at this. The white dots here are not the fruits of the thistle. These are snails that have desperately tried to escape the hot ground and climbed up. Lorenzo had warned us that extinguished fires could reignite even days later. 
which is why part of the group's work is patrolling burned down areas. We were about to see why. The fire that's been put out here is already a couple of days old and yet it can reignite in a second. This is something that's completely overwhelming the local fire brigades. They should be doing controls for days after a fire has been put out. This is not happening. What might seem like a desperate thing to do felt logical to me in the moment. I took my water bottle and extinguished the last bit of smoldering fire. But then we saw much more smoke on the horizon. A widespread fire was coming down the mountains, consuming everything in its way. Holy <laughs> the whole mountain range is on fire. The sight was sending literal shivers down my spine. What you see behind me is happening in Sicily every day. We tried to film more, but the flames were moving forward fast. So we headed back to safety to report the fire. Hi, um, do you speak English? Okay, um, I want to report a fire. Okay, where? We are at uh, Punta Zafarana in Trapani. Where? Trapani. Ah, Trapani, okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, uh, sure. Um, oh, well, that was quick. To put it mildly, we were not convinced that our call had made any difference at all. It's these experiences that explain why locals are self-organizing. I spoke to many of them. Those are just normal people that want to live normal lives, but they can't. Instead, they are forced to protect the crucial part of nature for the rest of us. And only two weeks after the camp, La Muarda was burning again. And they fought, even though the training was not yet complete. But they were better prepared than last time. And they were able to stop the fire in some crucial places. They will be even better prepared next time. And this progress is what makes all the difference. I think the issue about wildfires is that it leaves you with this uh, sense of you can't do anything about it and you're just absolutely not in power. And uh, feeling the people coming here and being there together turns that into the opposite. And it means like you can actually do something about it. And you're part of the story and you're part of the solution. And we do this together. The team is already looking beyond emergency response. How can we transform landscapes in a way that makes them more climate resilient through permaculture and rewilding practices? The truth is we need a lot of transformation, but there are people on the ground already shaping that transformation today. We found a Planet Wild to support those people. If you want our missions to become bigger, consider joining Planet Wild as a backer. Every member can vote on how we spend the money, connect with me and others on our Discord, and see their impact in the Planet Wild app. Sign up now with the link in the description. The more our community grows, the bigger our missions will get. If you want to continue watching, check out our previous missions right here, where we brought back life to a poisoned river and helped save Europe's cutest bird from extinction. A big thank you goes out to our existing Planet Wild members for making all of this happen. And you just unlocked your new mission badge in the app. Go check it out. See you all again next month, over and out.